Hey, you make me feel that, uh, you know, like if I've traveled to India, uh, flying to Calcutta, Kerala, wherever you are, uh, is something I, I, uh, I miss since the time I came back from India when I, when I was uh, living there. But though still I keep coming and going to India. So thank you all uh, for joining us in this talk or in this kind of reunion. It's very important for me to be connected with, with you. So uh, before getting into the uh, matter, I would like to, to uh, talk to you or to tell you about my journey or my journey into performing arts, but also my connection with Indian performing arts. Um, and also that will explain my approach into my own creations, but also um, my teaching activities that I do mainly in Spain and, and France. Um, I'm from Spain. I'm from, from uh, a city called Valladolid, which is the center of Spain near Madrid. Um, it's a land of castles and uh, we speak good Spanish, better than English. Uh, so, uh, since I was very young, I was attracted to uh, the folk dance of, uh, you know, Spain is very rich in folk expression. Uh, we have thousands of different songs and types of dance. You may know about flamenco, but every region has a different expression of, of, uh, of dance and music, uh, mo mainly uh, more uh, in the 70s, 80s. That's to say that, you know, the young people uh, is not any more interested or not so much like maybe 30 years ago. So I started to dance, uh, folk dance, uh, because I wanted to know about all those living traditions. Then I um, discovered theater in my high school and joined the drama school in my, in my city. But yeah, in the summer vacations, I, will, I was invited to, to travel to India as a traveler uh, with my, my bag. And we did that overland. I did it with my boyfriend. So we started from Spain, crossed Europe, reached uh, Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, till I reached India. I was only 19 years, 19 years old when I did this journey. Uh, so uh, I was in a way, not searching for anything special in India, but uh, you know, it was the sense of movement, the sense of, of uh, wanting to know other cultures, planning to come back to, uh, to Spain to continue my studies. But uh, in this journey when I was in India and coming all the way and seeing how, uh, how all that process of life and art was uh, somehow moving me, uh, I discovered in the Kajuraho festival, I saw a uh, performing arts festival where I, could, where I could see all the different dance styles of, of India. It was in 93. Uh, and there when I saw, very precisely, I saw Alad Melvali that you may, you may know her. I saw her dance and I was, I was in love with that. I thought, well, that, that has, had given, that I would say have given um, response to the, uh, to the kind of theater I was searching for, uh, because I was very much attracted by physical theater and by dance. So how I could see in her all the elements I was searching for. So I went to her house all the way from Gajuraho to, to Chennai to ask her whether she would teach me. Um, and at that point she was not teaching. Um, to that level, students that had no idea about uh, Indian dance. So she advised me to go to Kalakshetra, where I, I joined the school um, in Kalakshetra in Chennai. And I, because I was 18 years old, I could have many friends of the same age and have a kind of process that uh, they also have in the sense of structuring the learning in um, the way Kalakshetra does that. So I, well, I could not speak much English at that time, uh, but I did all the effort, could not learn Tamil, sorry for that, too difficult. Um, but I, I did, I, somehow I felt that I, I was having a kind of leading, um, or I could, I could understand the whole structure, because the first day in the class, what they talked me about was the Natya Sastra, the origin of drama. So from that point onwards, um, I could understand that parallelly to the physical training, there was a lot of things to read and to study. 
so my boyfriend who, who came with me was studying literature and uh, today's my husband so together we we did this journey uh, and also understanding that parallelly to the process of uh, of practicing every day my adavus and my training was the whole process of of understanding of reading uh, of course learning sanskrit but in in, in a way that could just help me for the understanding, uh, translating the poems for me to understand the whole meaning, all the background that you may have that I, I was not having in that context. So I joined Kalakshetra and then another kind of uh, love into my heart when I saw Katakali for the first time. So again, I, I had ICCR scholarship, you know, Indian government uh, scholarship to study. I could apply, so I, I had this scholarship for seven years that allowed me to select the best schools for that. So I joined Kalamandalam, the school for Kadagali in Kerala, in Cheruturuti, um, with the idea of getting even closer to, to the experience of theatre and dance in a kind of blend, blend um, art form. Uh, so I joined, uh, I joined Kalamandalam. And of course, continued my, continued my Bharatanatyam studies at the same time. And then went to Trivandrum, where in Margi, I was again adopted and continued my studies and perform. I did my, my Arangetram in Katakali, performing then many temples in Kerala with, the, with Margi troupe. So I would say that uh, in Katakali is where I could go through all the processes of learning from, from Kalamandalam, where I was starting with eight-year-old boys, uh, all the basic steps, up to the performance, uh, even, up to, even up to being part of a company uh, performing, performing Katagali. So this process allowed me to see all the aspects, because I, sometimes I see that when one does a workshop in Katagali, uh, you can only see the outer form, and it's not easy to go through all the aspects so that you can withdraw the essence of that to then apply it in your own work. So seven years of studying in India, um, again, my journey continued because I felt that, well, you have to find your, yourself within that form. Uh, of course, parallelly, while I was studying, and here comes the title of uh, why I selected this title of uh, the build and the unbuilt, because I think well, uh, in all the processes of building codes, of building structures, there is a need, at least in my, in my case, but I think if we could establish that in our learning processes, that would be very helpful. I mean, the unbuilding, which means letting, letting the freedom of expression without limits, without codes, to take part, to be, to be taking the leading part of the expression. So how? Uh, that will be maybe answered in all this uh, time that we have together. But from the beginning, I, I was in India after my class of Bharatanatyam or Katakali, I was coming back home in my Chola Mandal artist village in Chennai, where I used to live, and experiment with that. Finding the connections with me and even doing performance on that. I used to go to the beach uh, near Marina Beach and um, experiment the movement, how, how the movement I just learned in, in, in the context of Kalakshetra school uh, could be taken to the beach and to explore there with, in relation with the sand and with the sea and with the, with the elements. Even, you know, I did some uh, performances which uh, when I invited um, my Katagali teacher, he was uh, not understanding, you know, the connection between the two worlds even myself, because I had not acquired the language of Katakali to be able to improvise on that. So it was like two, two worlds which were not connected in a way. Actually, Ayapa Paniker, um, who you may know, the great scholar from Kerala and poet, when he came to see my program, uh, which was based on William Golding in The Inheritors, that was my first performance in India, uh, it was based, if you know the novel, it's a novel which talks about a Neanderthal meeting uh, the Homo sapiens. So it's, it was a kind of searching for a language using my, um, or trying to, to find out a language which was 
not um, my language in a way. So I could use the beginning of how a mudra was built and how the expression was trying to create a language with that. And he said, you know, you know, I would, I would uh, tell that your performance is a contextual dance theater performance. We cannot call it theater, we cannot call it dance, it's context. And that was interesting because that uh, allowed me to think that um, we have to be always in contact with the context. The context which is physically, nature, or which is a room, but also the context of bringing all this material to Spain uh, to contextualize that with, with my, so, my soil, with my, with my land, right? In a more, in a um, big way to think about cultures, but within yourself to find your nature, your elements within. So uh, after we decided to come back to Spain, um, so I say with all this material, and we, uh, I, I speak in plural because together with my husband, we, we have created what we call the India House, which is the, it's a cultural center, the only cultural center dedicated to India in Spain, where I, uh, where I teach. I direct the artistic laboratory, the Lab India, what we call. So I, I uh, direct the, the performing arts section within the, the house. And this is a center where, where we, in performing arts, because we have many, many other aspects, uh, Casa de la India is also for education, is for exchange, is for enterprise, it's so many other, other aspects. But in performing arts, we work as process of projects. So um, in that aspect, I would like to, to, um, to spread here, because when I went back to Spain, I created my own dance company uh, to start to start to experiment with this material and at the same time to perform the classical forms as they are and parallelly I was teaching um, for students that wanted to learn classical forms from Spain that wanted to learn about Bharatanatyam or Katagali but also I was introducing all this knowledge into the uh, drama school uh, of my region uh, giving workshops for theater students and at the same time, working with primary and secondary school to see how this knowledge can be also be taken to, uh, to school children and high school. So um, all what I can talk now is uh, in, in a way 20 years of, uh, of trying to, uh, to experiment with this material and understanding the laws that are underlying. Mainly, I would say, uh, if we, if we go to the, back to the Natya Sastra, to the knowledge that is within the classical uh, treaties that have different shapes like Bharat Natyam, Katakali, or Kudiyatam, or whatever. So uh, if you let me go back to the, to the uh, title of what, uh, of what we are talking today, uh, it's like because I feel connecting these two worlds of the building structures and the unbuilt structures is very important because we all have our own package of uh, different trainings. trainings. I'm sure you people have different, different backgrounds when you come to, a, to, to an encounter as a theater group or as a theater student. What is your package that you have with you in your body? Uh, so all these built structures, uh, I feel is very important to unbuilding them, uh, deconstruct them to analyze how how and why, why I do this, usually I, when I improvise, I do this movement, or why, where, where is this coming from? But also important to, to talk about the connecting of the two worlds, as I think this is my role since I came back from India, I'm trying to connect, that's why I said, one world with another world, call it East and West, or call it uh, contemporary classical, which is another interesting kind of dialogue, which one has to always somehow categorize, no, I'm a classical or I'm a contemporary artist. So, uh, and another important aspect is the letting nature to speak, letting nature to, to be part of this process. By nature, I talk about inner, inner forces, inner, inner spirit into that, which sometimes when you learn so codified, so codified languages, like in the classical, it's not very evident. 
uh, that you have to work all that material also within you. Like in my experience in, uh, in Katagali, where you see all this costume and all that uh, work, you, you understand why an actor with all this um, out of form makes you cry or makes you engage emotionally. It's not easy to go through, uh, through all this aesthetic, mainly if you think about, imagine somebody in a village in Spain, because we have done that exper experience also, bringing a Katagali troupe to a village in Spain and see how, how an actor can connect with the audience in the sense that, that go through or go beyond the, the, um, the codification to be able to create emotions in the audience. So in that, um, and already going to the experiments that we have done, we have created a work uh, with Katagali based on Quixote, I don't know if you know our novel, um, our novel Don Quixote, which is about Don Quixote, which is about um, this old man thinking that he is uh, he is a uh, you know an idealistic such an ideal world he lives that he thinks he can change the world. So this this novel everybody knows the novel in Spain. I mean we it, it's it's like our Mahabharata or Ramayana for you. Every, everybody will know about the story. So when we did an adaptation of Katagali, uh, of, that, of that story is where I realized that um, if you know the context, if you know the story, you can laugh and you can cry even going through or going beyond those codified uh, kind of uh, static or hieratic gestures that sometimes is what Katagali uh, we perceive as an outsider. So um, let me go then through, uh, through some of my experiments so that uh, we can first see as a, um, as a creator, a performer, how, how did I approach to, to all of that. And then we go to the um, techniques for the teaching in the different context. So um, we are already in Spain, as I said, with so much material. The first work I did was uh, trying to connect those languages of Bharatanatyam and Katagali into a, into, a, into a performance. So I created a based on Kalyana Saugandikam because when I was doing Katagali, my main character was Bhima because I'm, you don't see me, but I'm quite tall and big. So uh, I was in a way um, withdrawn or I was very attracted by this character. I mean, I could not do the Minuku kind of, of, uh, of character because I would have been taller than, than, than Bhima in that case. So, um, but anyway, Bhima is a very interesting character to, to understand the changes of mood. So uh, I did a creation where I started as Draupadi and Draupadi um, transforms on stage into Bhima as a kind of ritual um, preparing herself for the war as if she is going uh, or she's the spirit of Bhima to for the revenge. So uh, that was an interesting work for me because I could put directly the Padams in Bharatanatyam and directly the Padam in, in Katagali, but trying to find the connection and bringing the ritualistic aspect of that into the performance, even doing the makeup on the stage uh, by myself. And finally, um, the resolution of, of the killing of Dusasana was on stage through Katagali gestures. So I think that was for me, um, I would say the first performance we, because I felt that people have to see first um, the, the capacities or the possibilities of, of this, of this uh, language. Then uh, I did another work based on Akka Mahadevi. I don't know if someone of you are from Karnataka. Um, the Vachanas, which are sets, which are from the 12th century, we have uh, someone like Akka Mahadevi who, who uh, by her vachanas, we understood her life. Uh, she was naked, uh, roaming around with her very long hair um, and talking in a very direct language as something very spontaneous, her poems. So I, I took that poetry and when my husband Guillermo translated those poems in Spanish, and it was amazing to see how 
how uh, a woman from 12th century could speak so directly of the matters that women are living today. So doing this project in the villages of Spain and bringing Aka Mahadevi into the uh, into their lives uh, was an, an, again an amazing experience to think that um, if the language is so direct, because I was using also the technique of of Vachana in the sense of spontaneously saying, because that's what it means, the word Vachana sayings, um, talking very directly and with the accompaniment. In this case, I, um, I always work with live music, which is another aspect that India has uh, in a way, in the relationship between music, body, gesture, I think is something, that it's very, very important or very interesting, this dialogue with live music. And it's something that in Spain we we have like in flamenco and other forms to, to have this direct contact with, uh, with, the, with the music. So this was another interesting project. I put them like that. Maybe if later you have some questions will be great if you are interested in some, some of the projects. Another one was uh, Bhakti. Again, um, by, by uh, what I understood in India also, the whole classical traditions and then the whole, like what you call it Marga or the Desi traditions, which are um, of many other voices. No? So uh, Bhakti for me was a very interesting concept again, to, um, because it, it means devotion, but at that point, like Akka Mahadevi was also part of this concept where you break all the, all the rules of, uh, of everything to go directly in communication with God. So that was, again, uh, a very interesting concept to bring it to me, to say, okay, again, with the unbuilt kind of form, we learned all those padams in Bharatanatyam where you express your love to God and your beloved. So if I want to really do that, I have to find my own connection to that. That's the only way if I really want to do bhakti. So I was searching for voices in Spanish mystics, and we have amazing poetry uh, from 16th century, San John of the Cross or Santa Teresa of Avila, text that if you take a padam from, from India and you take a poem from this period of Spain, you could find the same images and the same kind of, of soul talking to a lover in such a way. Uh, Akamahadev in this case was such direct or, or sometimes the bhakti poems with Sektraya poems also where you can talk to your lover you know in a very romantic way or a very so direct you were much more brave than in Spain at that time because you know the language uh, at that point because of the Inquis Inqui Inquisition they have to hire somehow the the other connections so that the church could uh, accept them so um but the, the language is so similar that I did this journey, starting the performance like you start a margam from Bharatnatyam, where you start like a journey in the temple. You start from the outside, and this is what um, um, a dancer, the dancer from, from India, Bala Subramaniam, used to, to say, um, you enter from a temple where everything is like you do Alaripu and all those forms, and you slowly get into the Bala Saraswati, sorry. You slowly enter into the, the center where God is there. Uh, so I use this structure of a Margam uh, composition of a performance of Bharatanatyam to create my, my performance. So I started with something outside, which is uh, for, for the audience in Spain, uh, Slokam to Shiva and slowly uh, getting into my Spanish with the language to get closer to the experience of, of uh, the vernacular, to the, to the experience very intimate. So in that, in that space, I use contemporary poetry from uh, Spanish poets that have been influenced by the Spanish mystics, but other mystics. I'm, I'm going to read you a poem for you to understand what quality uh, this poetry, is, mystic poetry in Spain. I will read it in English for you. Body, the awakening, light. Hidden, 
thin liquid strings, soft bird. Final, with the hands you form words, with the hands and in their concavity, you form bodily words that we could not speak. This is a poem by, um, by a contemporary Spanish poet. And I think if I take this next to where the hand goes, the eyes should follow. Where the eyes go, the mind follows. Where the mind goes, the uh, image is there with the expression. And where the, the expression, it comes rasa or it comes the, the... So everything starts with the hand. So uh, when the poet here talks about, you know, how the, the, the hands, the words are formed, are shaped by the hands, and then says that, you know, all this, what the hand can express, cannot even express the words. It takes me to, to a whole mudra theory that uh, I think is one of the interesting aspects to, that we can uh, highlight and we can take from Indian classical forms to, to bring in it in our theatre experience. So that was another journey. Uh, I go now to connect uh, Lorca, Federico García Lorca, our poet, uh, in order also to connect, um, to bring poetry as the main, um, as again, as the main language and uh, what Lorca, I don't know if you, if you all know all the work that Lorca has done or what Lorca means into the Spanish writing for us, uh, he, he has been able to, to create an imaginary world where, where has many layers uh, in time and space, mythologies, etc. So um, Lorca created a work which is called The Deep Song. The deep song uh, is it's a kind of singing, which is called in Spanish is called cante hondo. Cante hondo means some yeah the deep song. Uh, this this kind of singing uh, has many layers. You can trace the layers up to India in a way. Uh, if we think that uh, where the gypsies traveling all the way. Uh, genetically, maybe it's it's also proved if if they were moving moved moving from from the area of Punjab up to uh, up to Spain, uh, the south of Spain, and settled down also there. They brought so many influences on the way. So probably, when you listen to a flamenco singer singing deep song, is so close to the microtones and to the kind of of uh, voice expression that we that you may listen into the Punjabi uh, or into the Rajasthani or in many other places in India too. Or even in the Arabic world also, when you, you hear from the mosque, the singing, and if, if you put a flamenco singer next to it, it will be so closed. So it means this deep song, which the gypsies brought all the way, uh, that, they, that they talked about the sufferings of the way uh, in all the way, because they were somehow um, they, 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 they had, wherever they went, they had to really suffer to be part of the, or accepted in the country. So, um, Lorca, what he did was, uh, he listened to all those poems sung by those, by them, and then uh, created some poems by first imagining a space, and then putting a rhythm into the poem which this, this rhythm is a kind of tala of different structures that we use in flamenco. So uh, uh, we took those poems with a singer, flamenco singer, and uh, reconstruct again this poem, finding the very, very deep sound that Lorca and all the gypsy trail would have brought with that. And for me, it was another opportunity to search to put, the, to put the body or to put the movement to that deep song. And uh, this, was, this is a project that has taken years. We, we still keep performing that, finding connections between Lorca and all those sounds. So uh, another project I would like to talk is about the voice of the body. 
Uh, this is a project with Ravi Prasad. He's a singer from Kerala, but he lives in Toulouse. And we together have developed um, this concept of voice and body as a kadwayam, like one. So uh, he has developed a whole process. Uh, he's been teaching voice in Europe for the last 30, 30 years. And the same process that he has done with the voice, I've been doing with the movement in the sense that finding what he calls the vibration within. So within the vibration, uh, he, was, he was withdrawn or he was uh, experimenting with the voice and I was experimenting with the body. Uh, this interesting meeting between voice and body and exchanging the roles of for him being the body as he, he was never a dancer and I was not a singer or using my voice for that. So we exchanged also that to, for this union. So this is an interesting process um, that we have, and we have taken workshops on that theme as we have created the performance as a Nava Rasa concept. So every scene has a Rasa to explore, which I think is another concept taken from the uh, classical treaties that allows you to explore each rasa in what kind of breathing, what kind of vibration you would use, uh, and from there to put a color to a scene, uh, which is, again, using this technique of, of, uh, of Navarasa. So these are the main, the main projects I wanted to share um, in which I created though parallelly also i i was part of some processes like collaborating processes like i was talking about quixote katakali which was um one i would say the more successful projects i've seen of intercultural connections between uh two not only countries because it's not about countries but two um gender uh, gender like we uh for us the um the, the most successful time in spain for writing is the 16th century and it's interesting that same period is where katakali is built so we were able to um to create a performance with katakali actors uh, i would like to hear talk about uh, Neliot Vasudeva Nambudri, who is an actor, 70, if I'm right, 75 year old actor from Kerala, who uh, became actually with this a very famous Quixote, Quijano character in Spain. We did this in a, in a classical theater festival in Spain. So how, my question is how a Katakali actor who has been trained only in that, particular style for so many years, they say 70 years, uh, how much of that is it's, it's embodied so naturally that when uh, he had to perform this character, Quijano, he was uh, without costume in the sense of he was only naturally wearing a dhoti and he was representing and the old man as, as, as in Quixote, as in the novel, um, thinking about all his life, going back to all his life. And the work with the director, Nacho Garcia, who directed, I was associated director, uh, was to how to na make natural, how to naturalize his expression, how to be able to take part your own, with your own um, thought and your own expression within the category form. And we found very interesting, uh, interestingly how by using Malayalam, like he was, we, we used the, the we used the text in Malayalam also. So he was somehow talking as when he when when a teacher is it's um, when a teacher of Katagali is teaching, it's very natural. It's very very beautiful actually the way the teacher brings you the word together with the mudra so that uh, you have the natural expression of, of the talking and then the mudra becomes a little bit less codified so that allows to to create an interesting dialogue of naturalistic aspect of katakali so it was very successful uh, in seeing how again we worked with a company in this case margi company uh, how we could make feel 
that that a theater performance is not about my performance as Bima and my performance as uh, you know as different characters, but it's about creating together the sense of that we create in theater. So uh, getting the even the musicians to get involved in all the psychological uh, process of the of the play, even uh, you know sometimes stopping the action to have the actors think or react naturally with the gestures, even with all the costumes. So it was an interesting process of, of the two approaches of, of theater. One being a codified classical and the other one letting breathe, letting the actor to take, um, to take an opinion and to take an expression from their own. So um, if up to here, uh, my research, like now I'm engaged in another project on prana, which will be uh, understanding how breathing transforms ourselves and how we can transform the breathing when this is uh, um, constructed or this is uh, restricted by, by whatever uh, situation we are living now. So um, <clears throat> parallelly to my processes of creation, uh, and I think this is maybe also interesting for you um, to see how, how, how did I approach teaching um, with all this material. So uh, first of all, um, because in this context, as I said, in India, in our center, uh, teaching classical art forms to foreign students, and here I put also foreign in the sense of out of context, not necessarily of a country, because the Indian diaspora in that case are also foreign in that, in that case, no? So uh, how to teach Abhinaya or expression to, to uh, people that have no um, embodied or even understanding or uh, getting closer to that kind of expression. So the only solution to reach the point where, where this has an interesting result is to, to work again with the built and the unbuilt. That's to say you have, you imitate certain movements, which in Abhinaya it's gestures, followed with certain rules, uh, which are um, there to, uh, to establish your movement, but then to unbuild that in a way that you find the connection within, uh, within you. So like, uh, like an example for that, uh, if we take a sentence from a Bharatanatyam Padam, which says, uh, he has come to my doorstep. So, uh, okay, you learned, you have learned the, code if, the codes to, to be able to express that. Now we experiment in the sense of, um, in, this, in this poem, which is the subtext, which is there to, to establish the movement for the word or like, becoming the bodily words, then we start to experiment in the sense of, uh, okay, changing the different moods in the different rasas, what happens, then thinking who is she, like an Aika, but what kind of woman, what, what is she, is she waiting there in the room, but how is the room? So doing all the questions related to that sentence and see how that, uh, develops or how that changed and then go back to the structure to see how this this is being filled up with with your own connections so uh teaching abhinaya in that case uh makes you understand or try or makes you um search for the uh, for the paths to reach to the movement which is codified so in another kind of project where i teach uh, is for theater students uh, in Spain that have no uh, clue or no idea. So uh, in this context, uh, it's very important. There are two different, you can approach it different in different ways. Like everybody should know outside India also that something like Natya Sastra exists. Uh, if we think about, you know, in a, um, at least in a theoretical way, it has to be part of our discourse. Uh, when I see the syllabus of uh, in, in a drama school and I, and I see that there is no any trace of that, I'm sad because I think it's very unique uh, in, the, in the theater world 
to have a treatise which is 2000 years back, but it's a, it's a life. I mean, it's not something like uh, you can read about uh, the Aristotelic influence or the Greek influence, classic, classical influence, but it's something that you can see with your own eyes when you see a, a Kudiyadam actor or when you see the work of Nelio, Nelio uh, in Katagali. So, I mean, we all have to, or at least from, from our center, and now I'm pushing in Spain so that at least there is a kind of uh, knowledge about that. And then once you enter into, into that, then you, there are, of course, different levels where you can go deep into understanding because in Natya Sastra is so huge that you can, in all those uh, chapters, you can study from light to uh, connection or the ritualizing the space. I mean, there are so many concepts there that you can, you can learn from a the theoretical work. But if we go through the process of an actor, then of course, I think uh, understanding the process of from training to the creation is very interesting. So how, how uh, a classical artist uh, is it's doing all the layers um, slowly by repeating in the body, uh, but how these layers are constructed. I think that, uh, that also is very useful to understand for an actor of today's where you have your physical training that you can again withdraw from so many today and I mean you can take techniques from all over the world if you want but um, to be able to uh, to understand that this what is the relation between this technique and the next process which is the creation so analyzing that uh, when you study the whole process in a category actor for instance it's interesting to see how this is developing how is this is developed uh, so when you when you want to to have this um the the, the training of, of 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 an outside actor into that first is the understanding of that process and how you can uh take from this process some of the of the laws that made possible this codification so um i like to work uh with concepts from Natya Sastra and then see how this, this can be explored. So if I take the concept of uh, Nritya, Nritya, Natya. So it means the abstract movement, interestingly. So, it, so you find in your body qualities of movement, which is uh, uh, from, you know, from the energy of the elements, from the elements of the sky, from the elements of the air, fire, uh, to the gravity, to see how from, from the level down is gravity, from the level up is the air, from here is the fire. Uh, so all the concepts of Nrita um, as a practice, but also in theory, how, how the concept of the body as limbs, which is like major limbs, which I have my whole arm, medium limbs, which can be my elbow or my neck, but then the minor limbs, which is my eyes, even my cheeks, my eyebrows. So this concept of the minor, minor movements that are creating or are part of the micro movement. So just, uh, and then the connection with the rhythm. So if I take a structure of movement, which is taken from Katagali or from your own impulses, how a rhythm uh, will vary if you take uh, the same sequence in a takademi form, or in takita, taka, takita, taka, takita, or takadimi, taka, takita. So how you include the rhythm as one experimenting aspect in your, in your work. So this is only taking what we call the nrita aspect. Then we take the nritya, which is the expression uh, where we, f we try to find in all those minor or minor limbs an expression of, uh, with the body. So in that, uh, I think coming back to the connection, for instance, an exercise saying where the hand goes, the eyes should follow. So it means doing an exercise with, your, with the power of the hands as being the 
the main uh, communicating tool to understand. This is something where many times in theater, we don't think about the capacity of the hands. But if you take uh, even just the concept of mudra as you know the origin of the word, which means mood, which comes, which means ceiling, which means a kind of uh, connecting or pact between God and the human beings. This is the meaning of mudra as the origin of the word. I think it was used for an exchange of uh, of uh, enterprise or, or uh, buying or getting something. This is a kind of uh, pact or a kind of how what is this a correct word a kind of um, um, connecting um, connecting the two worlds un uniting this is the correct maybe use of of um, of mudra so uh, if you think mudra outside the context of India if I think if I go to a church and I see the priest imposing their hands this is the the special moment where something becomes alive, uh, becoming the body. Uh, so you think that the power of the hand is something that we have to explore. But then again, how? Um, I have taken some exercise like um, certain mudras by themselves. When you learn all the 28 mudras with your hand, um, they are a form. They are energetically, energetically they, are, they have a power by themselves. So you can find what is the power behind or beyond that mudra. Like experimenting with this mudra to find different energies will be different than experimenting, letting the hand to be leading the body and the expression. I have done in, amazing um, research or results on that where from the hand, we have been creating um, sequences of with so many different moods where the text comes and starting from the hand. So this is like an interesting tool that we can we can use. And again, uh, another interesting tool will be the relationship between the text and the subtext, which is given by the body. So. What, what does it mean? Like I was, when I was uh, talking to you about this Bharatanatyam sentence, if we take this in Katakali, how is the process? So first, I take the text. A student of Katakali would take the text, the text and then do word by word translation of that text with my mudras, fine. You create a code with that. But then the next, the next step, well, good. The next step for, for, for the student will be, okay, now that I have my mudra, I will put this mudra into a sequence of movement. So there are different movements that embody that mudra. So uh, there are already codified kind of positions in the body that are taken to express that mudra. So interesting, if I have a mudra, I have to see what are the... Uh, movement that can take into my body this mudra. Uh, we did an interesting work with the deaf uh, association where we ex had experimented um, with them how how they would what is how is the language what are the the different how do they um, express the certain concepts and there is a whole research at the University of Valladolid of finding um, the, the metaphor within the, the sign language of the deaf, where the use of space, when we put together with, uh, with the mudra, um, with mudras, we realize that it's very similar, the use of space. Uh, they use the, the sense of, uh, we create codes, like if I say yesterday, I would do like that. If I say tomorrow is in front, if I do today, it's somehow here. The same if something is good, is up, or if something is bad, is down. So how, uh, you know, all those laws of uh, movement using the space and the time. It was very interesting because we just took one word, which means to be born. And we thought, okay, you know, in one 
with one mudra you can you know just just be born because we wanted to work with them okay now you translate this text in your sign language and then we realize that that has no sense because the the way they approach a language is different the way the language constructs is different so to be born it was a whole experience of a face coming from an, uh, something dark to light. So all those metaphors that uh, I think are the essence of the mudra uh, are so interesting for, for an actor to experience without getting into the form uh, necessarily that form given by that classical art form. So uh, that is another concept I think interesting to work with mudra and the relationship between the body, uh, the text. Uh, so we have a sentence and we have a sentence which says, uh, if you take that in Katakali, you already have embodied that word. And now how you put words together in movement. So it's interesting to see how you stitch all those all those uh, movements so that it becomes the experience become dance theater into that or choreographic theater and then you set a rhythm into that so it means there as a student of katagali they say now now you practice this sequence in this da din da da de 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 fine so i have to put all those all this structure into that this is an, again an interesting process because it can be this sequence or it can be my own created sequence. Once you have those, uh, somehow those elements, then the next step will be, okay, this is a sequence. Now you mix with the Nrita part. It means some parts are the expression with the mudras and some parts are only kalasam, which means just pure expression of movement. That is the structure of, of a Katagali story. So sometimes it's the text and sometimes it's the, um, just the pure expression of the movement. So that's again, very interesting structure to uh, experiment because you, uh, there are moments, those moments are very good to take your own part of that uh, because you don't have uh, the need of this leading text with a hand or audible, text so there is a full expression or the inner expression to find what is your connection to that so again another interesting concept will be what style are you given to this form in the sense of you can maximize the movement as something huge very expressive like in katagali with your open eyes and with all that or you can the same kind of structure with all those elements try to minimalize in such a way that it's like a thought, it's like memory, it's like something in the past where it's not important the, the, uh, the full expression of the movement, but it's there as a reminder of, um, of, a, of, a, of an emotional journey. So that is also interesting to be able to uh, manipulate in your performance the uh, from 100% to 1% seeing how all that kind of memory is in your body because either you have a, it's a memory or you have a restriction this this kind of sequence can be done in an inside box where you cannot talk or inside your room or inside without arms or without legs so um i i think this material to come to the character, that's when they, again the, the next process that will be done in this kind of sequence will be okay. Now I'm adding all the Natya aspects of, of it, which means how is the character, what is the background, what is the situation, and all that. So, there from there to build up. Um, so, for me, it's interesting to, to start processes with a hand or with a movement to reach to the um, emotional kind of, of level of it. So um, and in that process, um, we have always the choice to build our, our, to build our languages in a very intelligent dialogue between movement, pure movement, 
gestural movement, which is you can use more or less of my of the gesture codified or less codified, then the text, audible text, and then the music, and then the rhythm. So if I play in a very certain uh, way, controlling, because sometimes it's too much the leading of the voice of an actor, and then we forget about how the body is engaged in every second. The opposite would be is too much of the uh, of a codification of the body that does not allow the you know the body to pause and to feel. So it's interesting thinking in this choreographic way uh, where all those elements can be uh, subtly um, you can you can draw uh, the way you want manipulating this or controlling those elements. So um, I think uh, when I was talking about the style also, this other concept of Natya Sastra, which is the Loka Dharmi and the Natya Dharmi, the same thing, something which is very stylized because I decide whether it's something I learned from any classical form or it is from a natural. So th those uh, choices uh, in, in when you select or you have a structure or a small text will be of very much uh, used. So um, I think till here, if you want, I, I would like to, to make me questions maybe because, um, or if you feel something that you would like to know, or I think from my side, I said, well, because I had the feeling that Though I see you and it's great, I would like to do an exchange part now. So, Suprio, if you... Uh, uh, there are a lot of things. I but, went too fast. Uh, Sorry. No, no, it's, it's, it's nice. Hmm. Uh, actually, um, there is one uh, who asked you a question, like me. Upendra. Upendra Raghavendra, an yeah. actor, director, teacher from Bangalore, and he want to ask you a question. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, good, e good evening, uh, Monica. I, uh, yes. I am very, I am, I am blessed, and you are blessed because uh, you are sir, a theatre actor. You sir, are from Kalakshetra. Sir, sir, please open your video if possible, so we can see you. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, we both are blessed, you know, because uh, you are a theater actor, you are from Kalakshetra and you had a, uh, you know, experience from Kalamandalam as well. But my question is, uh, you are from a different desha, I mean, a different uh, country. Why people are not inclined towards the deshi tradition more than the marga tradition? I always <laughs> expect from a scholar from outside has to contribute shall contribute something to the deshi tradition and then they can take something to their deshi to their deshi tradition but marga which is uh, which doesn't belong to any world in my, my humble opinion because it is from a different world so in that sense uh, i wish to know if you have uh, a con uh, given or uh, given something to the acting tradition in the spain in the context of the deshi which will be which will be a little great. Uh, I, I, it's my uh, just a, a layman opinion about it. If you can speak something, I will be. Yes. Uh, well, for me, because I I already um, talked about this concept. It was interesting to to dialogue with Ayapa Paniker in this uh, about this concept, because when we invited him to Spain to give a talk, uh, he would uh, mention Mahabharata or he would come and sing a lullaby. So, uh, which comes from a, from a deshi or from a from a local, very local uh, tradition. So, uh, I have to say that for me, these are all layers. I cannot I cannot spread split myself uh, into marga or deshi. I think it's already within. You know what what I mean is like um, when I if if I do an akka mahadevi um, in in which is which are vachanas and very much desi in the sense that it it really represents a, a talk of the people in Karnataka. And this is translated directly into Spanish uh, to, to have that expression, uh, I feel I'm contributing to that. But at the same time, 
interestingly, in Spain, we have, when you go and, and learn uh, into a <clears throat> conservatory of dance, I go, I have my, my daughter, she's 16, she's going for dance. And you know, she's learning folk dance from Spain. Then she's learning the codified form, which is a blend of folk and, um, and classical ballet. Then she goes for a stylized dance, which is another, again, another form, which is from 19th century. Then uh, we go to contemporary flamenco, which is 20th century. So I believe that a kind of splitting of Margi and Des Marga and Deshi uh, is very difficult to do that because it's all part of the same cake. It's all part in layers of the same cake. Yeah. So, so I feel... <laughs> yeah. I, just to add to that, I had in mind of Wotan Tullal and Katakali and Kudiyatam together when I mentioned Deshi. Because as you exactly said, it's not a binary opposite. It's uh, like Margi or Deshi or Nottidharmi or Lokadharmi. It is within. It comes out. If, wherever it is needed, it comes out. Of course, it's right. But I had in my mind that what do you think of that Wotan Tullal, which is a Desi tradition, which has Kalyana Saugandigam. And then, uh, because you mentioned Kalyana Saugandigam, because I am from Karnataka, you mentioned about Takka Mahadevi. It was so, you know, enriching. I am, I am so happy. Yes, I, I, but just to answer, but I, I saw once a German uh, artist from Germany. He studied Wotan Tullal. Uh, when I was, at the same time I was in Kalamandalam, he was st studying Wotan Tullal and he was translating in German the same form. I mean, he was. Uh, the, it was a very tough job to translate in German the Otan Tulal kind of singing. But interestingly, because Kadagali has, uh, we could connect our novel from Spain because uh, it would have been more difficult with Kudiatam, but with Kadagali, Kadagali has many aspects in which uh, the Desi aspect is much more there. So it was easier to, in a way, to bring those elements to, together because one of the characters of Kadagali, in this case for, for the play, for the novel, called Sancho. Sancho is a village man who has to uh, convince Quixote that he's crazy about his dreams, that it's better to be, you know, farming the land. So the connection, uh, I mean, Kadagali has all those tools already. So, but of course, there are so many Desi, so many interesting poems in India that uh, it will be also a pleasure to to experiment with that. Uh, of course, why not? Monica, uh, I just uh, because as a theater practitioner, <clears throat> I want uh, to know something uh, uh, is possible that when we uh, choose a text. Uh, or a poem, and uh, and what comes first when you are uh, talking about that? Okay, uh, then I take uh, the movement, then the whatever the classical movement, maybe Kathakali, Bharatnatyam. But if you read a poem, which thing is come first? The form or how I want to uh, present or, uh, or the essence of the form, what is the form uh, about or the poem think, about? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, uh, if, I, if I understand what you mean, I think, I think um, you can take it either way and will be, the result will be interesting or the result, if, it depends how you put the elements. I realize when I move myself in an improvisation work, even without, even without thinking of a text. Uh, I built up a language uh, in which I, 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 can, I can see the inner language within my movement in the sense that I always search for the form within the unform. So uh, that's to say, um, if, if the poem was not there, to start, you reach the poem. If, the, if you start from the poem, then you have to uncodify that and say, okay, the, 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 the poem is underlying there. And I let my body to find the word, to find, to find this connection with the, with the word. So uh, I don't know, maybe it's just one 
uh, if I take a point, like body, the awakening, light. So, okay, I can let my body to, to find those forms and then some, the mudra can come, but if I don't want that to happen directly, I have to find the quality of that word to reach to the precise word of the poem. So if I have, if, the, if, if it's a, awakening, then um, how, do, how do my body is awakening and from where, from where that happens? So that the word, so that my body embodies the, embodies the word. So I think, well, the, the, the uh, it's so interesting, the connection between poem and movement. Poem, interestingly, maybe more than, than uh, a non-poetic or fiction word, because a poem wants to synthesize. I mean, every word is there because it has a lot of meaning. <clears throat> I remember going to, again, Ayapapanike with a, with a padam of Kalyanasagandikam and say, just one sentence, he, I mean, so many underlying context of every word. That's why uh, I think Sanskrit, uh, in this case, uh, or even Malayalam, or you know the, the language, which the languages that have so many, that a word contains many um, many meanings, um, compared to Spanish, where we we like the action. I mean, our language is mainly verbs. It means <clears throat> it's it means that we go directly to the action. That's why you know in Spain we go directly without thinking about many things because for us the important is the verb. But when the, for a language, the important is the noun, is the, you know, the object of it, then it has so many layers that uh, that's why it's so rich to, to, to see how you build up from within a body, from a, a word from within with so many meanings at the same time. Just uh, one more thing to do. It's not a question, but to know that, uh, as a dancer, you uh, learn a lot of forms. Uh, okay, to understand Kathakali, Bharatanatyam, and also the another forms. So, um, and also, as you uh, told before, that you are a mother, you are a wife, and you have your own, as a director, a lot of activities. You are a lot of things. Yes, you are not only a dancer, a lot of things. Not mm -hmm. So the question about the uh, knowing about this, that as a human being, uh, what comes first to you? Like now, this is the quarantine period, and uh, we are all very aware when death comes to us. We are all now that okay, death is in uh, my door. So be prepared, wear a mask, and also a lot of things. Now, as a human being, as a, as a mother, as a wife, as a dancer, all things, now I give, or now someone give you this word, that, okay, death is in front of your door. So now, uh, what comes first, that okay, do something, anything, you say something, it's come first movement or your voice that no, don't come now or whatever, I don't know. So this is uh, just to know because uh, this is very interesting for me that now whatever you are doing something, it comes dance or it's come a movement that helps you to learn the Kathakali, Bharatnatam or uh, other forms. Now your body is in the flow that okay whatever you are doing some movement is is a uh, grace is i don't say it's uh, it's is more energy you know that my body is now this but as a performer is this come first that okay i do this in a kathakali form or i do this in a bharatnatyam form or i don't know what form come uh, i want to go with this sentence I just mm -hmm. understand this <clears throat> yeah for me I think um, it's interesting to see all those layers um, all those layers of 
in the context. If we go back again to, to contextualizing, for me it was very important to understand, and I think this is also something given from the Indian thought, of contextualizing yourself, or contextualizing where you are. So um, <clears throat> for me, sorry, <clears throat> I understood that um, when I came back from India, if I go back to those years, then we go back to, to now. But in the year 2000, when I came back to Spain with all this material, I had the feeling that I didn't want this to be a kind of costume that I had to wear. Uh, and then I had to, you know, to, to fix myself within that. That's why the unbuilding part of that was always to, to think that I want my body to find the, the connection with that. So if I want first my inner, my inner, uh, expression come and then realizing that if I see myself improvising when in 94 where there was no not there was no language at all so that's why when Ayapa Panikar saw that it was like amazing I mean it's no it's totally unformed which I cannot do now in a way because the moment I want to to do a movement this is somehow contaminated by all those knowledges yes so this contamination at the same time, even without thinking, one, one uh, interesting thing would be, okay, now I do this movement because I think this is similar to flamenco or that. Okay, that's one, of, one kind of research. Another level will be, okay, let my body go with, with whatever. When I hear a flamenco song and it is part of my very inner deep, deep song, I let my body to speak. There is where I find in the freedom of that, that sometimes it comes in a very um, uncontrolled form. Uncontrolled form because it has a form. And I see myself in the video uh, because I don't choreograph uh, all those things, which are, I consider that improvisations. Then I see such, um, I can see my language in that. I can see I have constructed Monica's world into that. If I were to come out of that, it's a lot of effort again. So it's like, again, starting from scratch, from breathing, from a very deep sense of connecting myself, trying to find the essence of the movement. So it's for me uh, a whole research, what you are talking about. I have a very personal experience. Uh, I had in this, con this time where, I, where we're at home, I, I started to develop a very strong pain and you know, this pain in my arm, I could not go to a doctor because you were not allowed. So it's to say all the, the world in a way became to say, you cannot heal this. It's only yourself because there is no other choice now. So I got into my theater space and I could find uh, the source of my pain, which was also part of all this concept of all this, afraid uh, terror that we all live with now uh, and then find the place of movement and heal myself so um, I don't have pain anymore so okay. how to say finding the very deep context in which you are there with you yourself alone in a context like that the capacities of the body are so amazing. Uh, I mean, even the images, I think after that a performance could happen because I had the feeling that I was an amazing big eagle that was somehow in a small cage and could not move. So uh, with my arms, which I usually use my hands and my arms as, as the main expression of myself. So this, um, this wound made me understand that finding the real movement of that can even heal you. So um, I think getting deeper into yourself will create forms from the unformed, but very deep meanings for you, which I think is what I'm searching now. When, you, when I see myself also uh, as a mother, I have two kids which are training in dance professionally, and I had them at home for three, for three months and they had no classes. Uh, so in a way I said, okay, now is my Guru Shishya time uh, with them to experiment and to, to, um, to think that in all those processes of learning forms and codes, there is time to feel yourself uh, in an uncodified form. And I think that we all have to 
exercise that. Thank you. Uh, okay, it's very nice. Yes. So, any so, any any questions from uh, others? So you can ask questions. One questions because one or two questions. I think now is ten. Hmm. So, if possible. Judy ko Banglai bolte chau Banglai bolte paro. Sorry, I use the Bengali language because Perfect. they understand. I love it. Okay. I love it. So, Judy ko Banglai bolte chau bolte paro. Kono oshubida nai. Ami chesta korbo ok English jite bolle dawar. Sir, I want to ask one question. Ah, please, 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 please. Uh, Ma'am, uh, while you were saying uh, different stories, uh, you said that there was this one woman and she had these hairs and she was undressed and she was walking. Uh, hmm. Could you please elucidate on that? Yes, uh, uh, her name is Akka Mahadevi or Mahadevi Akka. She's from, uh, from Karnataka. Uh, I think the professor who was talking before maybe has some, I don't know his name, he just uh, made the first question. Anyway, so Akka Mahadevi was, um, was a woman um, that, if we understand, I mean, there is a whole mythology around, but probably she, uh, she was very beautiful, so they wanted to marry her with the king, then she, she escaped from that, uh, because she wanted to, I mean, she was in love with God, it was a kind of Mirabai story. But the interesting uh, part of her is like um, she decided to go uh, to go out of, of that context of that palace or whatever and started to wander around. While doing that, even the, the other bhakti, bhakti from the bhakti traditions that were creating, what, uh, there, there was a kind of place called Kalyana, a kind of temple. Even she was rejected from there. She had to go through different um, kind of trials to see whether she was really uh, in love with, with God or if she was true in what she was talking about. So she developed a kind of talking which has so, uh, it was so powerful in Vachana form that uh, many of the Vachanas are told today uh, in, in Karnataka as part of the tradition in a way. So here we have somebody who broke with all the rules as a woman, as a, in, in the caste system also. Uh, she broke all the rules. It, through her language, she could address to the men. There are beautiful poems uh, by her, like, uh, like saying, take all those husbands that, uh, that die and cook them into the kitchen fire. You know, such a strong, strong sentences at that time where she, uh, because you could imagine uh, seeing some beautiful girl around, naked, just covered with her hair because she didn't want to dress, thinking that you have the problem, whatever you see on me, I don't have a problem. So it was so brave, I mean, to think on someone like that in the 12th century. Uh, and then the kind of thought and the way he was, she was addressing them, uh, you should read some of the poems. You can find them. Uh, actually, Eke Ramanujan, I don't know if you know him, he has translated some of the poems, um, Vachana poems, Eke Ramanujan. I know him a lot because my husband did his uh, PhD about uh, his translating all the Vachanas, all the Dravidian studies into English. And he has, The Speaking of Shiva is one of the books that he has translated, or Hymns for the Drowning, another one. It's very interesting for you, I think, or it would be interesting to read such poems which are from, yeah, from th those traditions. So when we translated that in Spanish, which is also a very direct language, as I said, very direct with verbs, it was very strong. I mean, it, it is such a strong uh, poetry that I use some of the poems in one performance, the one I did in Calcutta for the uh, Tantidatri Festival. Uh, that some people cannot cannot take it to be so direct, and that's something. Uh, do you think, to, uh, you know, in twenty first century, that uh, there are certain way of saying things which are truth that are, you know, are very harmful for the heart. Uh, so it's good to go back to her if you can. 
there is one question by Altaf Hussain. Altaf? Altaf? Altaf Hussain? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Please open your video and uh, you can ask your question. Uh, just a minute. Uh, I'm actually in a dark. Uh, I, I'm walking actually. Okay, so, okay. You, you can ask. This is why I just uh, texted it. So, uh, whenever we make uh, uh, any fresh pieces, so there is thing when we do a physical th uh, theater, physical uh, performances. So, I struggle a lot to, you know, avoid repetitive uh, movements. So how can I avoid these moments that uh, whenever I, uh, if I make one performance, it is, it has certain moments. And if I make second performance, this uh, keeps repeating. I, I need to avoid that. So how can I do that? So, uh, well, I have an interesting, um, I, the other day I found a book which says, um, the unboring of the repetitive movement, which is, is in Spanish. Uh, which, which is to say, the problem is not the, the movement, I would say, that comes as a repetition. When you have a poem and, and things come, come, uh, come again as, the, as a leitmotif, it won't be a problem. The interesting link part for you will be to, search, to, to research and bringing, take that, I would suggest, take that uh, structure of movement and do the variations of that put it in another rhythm, do it in a very slow motion or very quick or very fast, uh, put it as a memory, put it as something exaggerated, as something huge and enormous. So let it, let it breathe. I mean, if it comes back, I don't think it's a problem that movement to come back because when I see, um, when I see some, but the interestingly part will be if I see that in a transformed way, so for that, maybe uh, by creating, when you create the structures, think about all the other element, elements that can help you to, to transform that. If I improvise, uh, of course, my, my body and now my age will be like, I do always in certain rhythm, even without, without thinking ab about it. Like we said, uh, when I worked with Ravi Prasad, they said there are two kinds of, of rhythm, of movement, inner rhythm. One is the walking one, which is a four by four. And the other is the heartbeat, which is a, uh, you know, this one. So in the combination of Takita, Taka, yes. you, have, yes. you have both. Jeez. So why don't you experiment mm -hmm. uh, certain structures where you, you, you stress and bring rhythm into that, into different levels. You will see how different is to, to Practice this movement okay. in one okay. or in another. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So, Monica, we are hmm. just to, uh, but I promise you that there is uh, one of our friend Daliadi, hmm. uh, and he uh, she will sing a song for you. I think oh, that's great. You are talking about something inner. Uh, hmm. The movement and I request Dalia D to if it's possible to sing a song from Lalon so something it can be interesting. Dalia D Dalia D Apniki Achen Dalia D she's gone <laughs> escaped Achi 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 no no Achi 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 Actually, this song uh, means that the nature, uh, the the sky, the wind, and the leaves are singing as as uh, they are singing nature. 
uh, you, know, you should sing with them and you feel uh, the, your emotions with the nature. This is the meaning of the thing. गाए आकाश तिन्नी गो आज जेम करे आज जेम करे चाहे माता करे आज हवा जेम पता पता मोर बोलिया बोल के कदमिया Okay. 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 Nice. There is some yeah. network problem because mm. uh, it's today is difficult. But uh, thank you again, Monica. Oh, she continues. मोर मरिया बन के कदार बुकेर माचे कदिया दाओ आज जमुन करे गाई छे आकाश निकरे गाओ गो आज जमुन करे thank you oh well, thank you thank, thank you, you. <laughs> oh, oh, great mm. Mm. what a nice gift hello yes. supriya uh, anand yeah yeah, yeah 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 just can i just ask you know, monica uh, first of all supriya thank you so much for having this beautiful okay, presentation okay, okay, okay. <laughs> monica uh, uh, I'm wondering because you know if you if you look historically spain does not does not have much to do with india but you came to india and learn all this uh, beautiful <laughs> folk of acts arts and came to came back to spain and performed in front of a spanish audience how was that experience and then also you know i used to be a theater person <laughs> to perform and then the kind of satisfaction we get after each you know that that's what we actually looking forward after each performance we look forward our own satisfaction and how was that when you perform using all this critically mudras and everything to a spanish uh, spanish audience and also this, i just want i don't i don't want to ask another question that's why i'm adding this into it where can i see your performance do you, do you have anything on a uh, website so that i can actually go and watch it look at it and hopefully if everything is like you know when the pandemic is over i'll definitely come and watch your show one day oh great <laughs> <laughs> well uh yes I think my whole research during this time when since I came back from India was to connect with the audience. I mean uh I think for me um though we think so all all the somehow from all the performances I have more or less explained uh, sometimes more codified like this Draupadi Bhima or something more open 
uh, in theme like Lorca, uh, is always the search of a very deep communication with the audience. And I have to say that for, you have to find tricks on how to connect with the people. Because the first, okay, there is, uh, I would say, the other day was, they were asking me what are the, how we can improve the relationship between India and Spain. Because though we love each other, I think there is a kind of love at first sight with India. Right? This is what happened in Spain. It's something that it, uh, India is always attracting people in Spain, I would say. Though it's not part of the, you know, of, of uh, historically we don't have links. But uh, there is some resonance, resonance or echo when, when um, like I said, when we listen to a, to a singer, Hindustani singer, and we can understand or somehow it goes very deep into, into the Spanish uh, ears. So I can, I can trace because all these 25 years um, of very deep connections, we, we are in Spain, uh, somehow we are not very rational uh, in general, I would say. It's more, it's, very, it's more passionate, it's more emotionally engaging into things. That's why even for me, it's difficult to, to teach something which is like uh, step by step and people want to enjoy quickly. So um, in this, in this way, we have a good audience for, for Indian performing arts, where we abandon ourselves in the sense that we don't try to analyze all that as something that you want to understand. When I was performing in villages in Spain where no context at all, just if I use my voice in Spanish at the beginning and say the story and then get the people somehow uh, without the barrier of language, if you, if you uh, break that through, you have it in your pocket somehow. The moment, the moment, you know, the connection is there emotionally. When they have some emotionally, something emotionally to to experience. So uh, for me, I have to highlight two experiences. One is in the bhakti tradition, where performing those uh, devotional poems, like in south of Spain, when when the Jesus Christ is taking in a procession in the street, uh, some people would sing those kind of poems of love poems. So if you use those poems in, in an Indian language of expression, the connection was such that uh, using bhakti for that is a very interesting connection. Um, where I felt now I can say it's fulfilled. I'm fulfilled because uh, I want all the levels and all the layers to communicate with the audience, to experience rasa or to experience something emotionally with them. So this is my whole research in all this time. And I have had beautiful experiences on that in the very remote, not the very sophisticated theaters, but in remote places in Spain. With flamenco also, uh, with Lorca. Lorca has also, when we went to south of Spain, to the village, we performed in the house of Lorca. And uh, children came and kids came uh, and they knew the songs. So for them to see those songs interpreted in a different way with music that comes from an, another part of the world, uh, it made them feel Lorca as something very universal and big. And I think, uh, I think it's a very, very um, good love story in Indian Spain. So we keep, keep on doing things. Thank you. So um, I, have a web, I have a website, which is oh, Monica okay. de la Fuente, yeah. You can, Monica yeah, de la Fuente dot com, where you can, Sorry, it's in Spanish for the moment, but you, with Google today, you can translate. There you can see many of the projects, videos, and all that. So it's my name. Actually, I wanted to change my name at one point when I came from India to have some exotic Indian name. And then, you know, realizing that my surname means from the source, from the fountain. Traditionally, we, in Spain, we inherit the father's, the father's uh, we don't change to our husband's surname. So my father is from the source. So I thought Monica from the source is a good name. Why to change it? <laughs> Thank you again, Monica, for sharing your time. Thank uh, you. Uh, I think uh, yeah, you have Hello, in, yeah, Jack, you. Jack in. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. You. You Hello, ask? Monica. Uh, Hello. Hola. Soy Joaquín de Gran Canaria. Hola, Joaquín. Hola. Um, I'm just starting to introduce myself and to know the Indian theater and Indian performing arts. 
So from Spanish to Spanish uh, person, I would like to know if you recommend me somewhere to start uh, to, to, to know the theater, the, the performing arts in India. Uh, what should I know? What uh, I never should uh, miss? No? Uh -huh. Well, I have, uh, there are so many parts, but uh, we are lucky now in Spain, we have, trans we have a very good translator of Natya Sastra. Uh, it's, a prof it's, it's a book uh, by Ivan González, which uh, is a professor in, in the University of Valencia. And he has done, it's a very good introduction because we cannot just start reading very complex, or we, we can, but at the same time, I think if you, if you can, uh, he, has two, he has two books. Actually, I have them here. It's called the Natya Sastra, La Técnica del Arte Escénico, Iván González. Uh, for the first time, a theater director has uh, done a translation and a thought in a contemporary context. And I think it's very helpful to, to understand that. Um, and once you, you read, I think that will also create a lot of questions to you. And then I have to invite you to Casa India to come. We have a very regular program and it's not so far like India. We have a very good library with all that. So get, get online in casadelaindia.org because uh, we can help you uh, personally also to be a platform. You saw it website that you are very involved with uh, Casa India. Yes, so because I'm, I'm teaching there and uh, sometimes there are scholarships for people to, uh, that want to come to India. So write to me if I can. Yes, uh, may I call you sometime? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. So and then, and then we can, uh, it's interesting to participate in some of the workshops that we organize. But if you can come, if you can go to India, it's also great. There are some scholarships uh, that I had, this kind of ICCR, the government scholarship, or um, because wherever you start, if I say uh, Marga, then the other professor will be saying, what about Desi? Fine. Uh, but, there <laughs> no, <are> some... <laughs> <no>. <laughs> but for me, uh, well, classical means has so many layers within. So I would invite you to to read the Natya Sastra and then, then try to do some workshops on. Okay, so maybe I, I bring you from, uh, where do you live right now? I live in Valladolid, in Casa India. So I'm in very near Casa India. From Valladolid to Gran Canaria and you make a workshop here. That's I do, it's actually, I, I, uh, we have very good contact with the Indian community in Canary Islands and we have yeah, done, yeah, been invited a few times. Yeah. So please, Joaquin, try to write to us at uh, Casa yeah. India and then have my number and talk. Yes. Mon Monica, we, we are friends, myself and uh, yeah, Joaquin are friends. Are. And, uh, and I've so, seen his performance. Today. He's got a really good theater group and they do really good performances. Oh, wow. I'll so be, then I'll you are invited there. by two Spaniards now. Thank you so uh -huh. much. <laughs> I'm taking it up. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Anand, for calling me from USA and to join in this session and thank you Jackin for joining us so we are a lot of webinars in uh, future so please mm -hmm. join and we discuss and in this time it's very important to uh, what i say to connect each other uh, through dance through painting through theater mm -hmm. and through human being is very important. Thank you again, Monica. Thank you, Supriya. Thank, thank you, Supriya. Thank you also for organizing this. So beautiful. I mean, from Vibhavan, from India, mm -hmm. love from us. Be happy yes. and hope we meet together. someday. Good. Together. Yes, yes. Yes, so keep in touch. Yes. Bye, everybody. Yes. Thank you, Supriya. Thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.